Gone. Now keep him talking, Tom. You don't want him nodding off. Righto. Come on, get it over here. Nice driving, Eddie. Wait till they find out you haven't got a license. No jokes, Stuart. Come on, Eddie, hang in. You'll be right. Not this time, mate. Get that light in here. Come on. Get Under my seat. Get it to Susie. I try to move. We'll have you out in the street. Susie, right? Right, Eddie. She'll get it off from us. You better. Get these people out of here. Come on. Hang in there now. Got enough shots of this? Is he all right? No, nah, he's not going to make it. Tom, be promoted to car accident. Now, Ray, demoted to bank robberies. Where to? You know Artie Weeks' place down on the beach? Yeah. They're in a hurry. I gotta call home, the kids sick. Sure, do it when we get there. Thank you for your concern. Hello, Susie. Uh, it's Tom Stewart here. I think you might remember me. I'm the journalist. Uh, listen, Susie, I have to talk to you about Eddie. Look, love, they would have thrown the book at him. He wouldn't have seen daylight again. Susie, <clears throat> Eddie wanted you to have this. Traceable? <laughs> Knowing Eddie, I wouldn't think so, would you? What, there'd be 10, 15 grand there? Tied you over for a bit, wouldn't it? Look, I want an exclusive on him. You bastards are all the same. Well, I, we liked Eddie. I don't want to tip a bucket on him. I just want to tell his story. Look at it this way, Susie. A 
big page one send-off. You right, Meg? <clears throat> First time hang I on, Hang on, hang on. First time I met Eddie. Your methods are getting worse, Thomas. Yeah, I like to think so. Comes from your warm sense of charity, does it? Look, mate, I promised Eddie I'd give her the money. I can't believe your bloody door. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about anything. Just forget it. overcome many obstacles through his experience, initiative and guidance. So although this is a novel, in a very real sense, a for the it also is not. Do you know what I mean? Killing. Let's have a look at what Stuart's done. He's taken a real criminal case and he's turned it very cleverly into an indictment against a system that he believes discriminates against the underprivileged in our society. Check out the title. A Killing for the Crown. Now that seems to suggest that justice has become some kind of uh, blood sport, as opposed to a real assessment of the truth. Although since publication, some doubts have been cast upon the authenticity of Stuart's information. Don't you think, Natalie? Sir? Natalie? Please? Prentice, do you think Stewart's book is responsible for the retrial and acquittal of James Edward Hodges, or do you think he was misled? I don't know. No, of course you don't. But then you don't know much, do you? Since your mind rarely raises itself above belt level. Anyone we know? Well, Prentice, since you seem intent on discussing the artistic merits of this particular work, I suggest you take it directly to the headmaster. Oh, shit. No. Oh, shit. Yes. It's not mine. Quit hassling me. we were discussing Stuart's use of non-fiction as a weapon against social injustice. Morris, this business with young Prentice... I assure you, it won't happen again. Well, that's very gratifying to hear. But I don't feel that I can let the matter rest there, for all concerned. You know how deeply sorry we all feel about Claudine. Look, M Morris, the holidays will give you a chance to relax. However, today's actions are totally unacceptable. And if it happens again... Thanks for your support, Henry. Bloody hopeless. Tom Stewart isn't back there by any chance, is he? Yeah, I think so. Get him. Stewart! Yeah? 
Detective Sergeant Birch wants a chat. Oh, no, lucky. Come on, Mick. Not you. Bit of strife, Ray. Tried everything. Want to talk to him? Not especially. Your scoop? Yeah, my ass too. Derek, get everyone out of sight. He's got a shotgun, so stop where I tell you. All right, everyone back. Oh, thanks, Ray. You'll be all right. I want everyone out of here, right out. Behind the car, come on. Everyone out of here. Come on. It's far enough, Tom. Behind the car, come on. Hey, Ray. I know you don't want to talk to us, but the gentleman standing out there is a reporter. Name of Tom Stewart. You've probably heard of him. He wants to hear your side of the story. What do you say? Liz! I don't want to pry into your personal affairs. And whatever reason you've got for doing this, I'm sure is a good one in your eyes. Look, all I want to do is talk to you and get your side of this. Maybe take a photograph. That's even fair. Well, what about the coppers? They just want to wrap this up, go home and have a beer. They don't want blood. They're just doing their job. Yeah, well, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Derek will bring your mate up. Coming? Detective Allen will look after you. Just wait here a minute, please. Allen, get shot first. Right, Three counts of rape, two attempted murders. He wouldn't have let that girl go. Yeah, it stops overcrowding the jails, right? Get real, Tom. I don't need any more fucking favors, all right? Well, the two shots. Liz be fired first, if you. And I saved your life. You do understand how the story will read, don't you? By the way, great exclusive on Eddie Weeks's girl. Don't know how you do it. I really don't. shining down on the tiny village of Bethlehem. Astrological science informs us today, of course, that this was undoubtedly the earliest recorded manifestation of Halley's Comet. The real one, not the five-watt fucking fuzz boy on this time around. So Joseph Christ, the poor and humble carpenter, comes schlepping down the road, leading a donkey. And on the donkey sits his wife Mary and their three children. Ezekiel, Ellie, and Aaron Sorry. Mary is heavy with child, and the child is not his.
God, don't you ever give up? What a fable I gotta get out. Seems I didn't see what I actually saw. And the moral is? Keep your contacts. Just write the story. Vivian Enderby? Viv. Morris? It's Claude there, Viv. Oh, Morris. Tell her I'm getting lonely. No, no, Morris. Not tonight, please. Back at four, she said in the note. You drink too much. If she's not with you, I'll have to start calling the hospitals. It's Morris on his hospital rounds again. I'll go over. He should have pulled himself together by now. Would you if you lost me? It really is Morris, is it? not impressed with your report on the shooting at the warehouse. For Christ's sake, I get fucking results, don't I? Yeah, it's just that I've got to front up in the morning and answer some questions. Oh, but I just tell him the truth, Derek. Leslie was about to shoot. He was an evil little bugger who would have killed the girl and the bloke anyway. I mean, what do those tricks upstairs know? They've forgotten what it's like out here. Let's leave the high-minded stuff to the likes of Stuart, OK? Look at those proofs. Ah, not out of scotch on your royalties, Jack. Yeah, eleven dollars and sixty cents. They just sold the hundred and seventy-third copy. Oh, don't get me wrong, mate. The book was good. The book was bullshit. He was guilty, and every other bastard knew it. You were set up. I was set up. Not to mention the publishers, your friends who backed you, me, the typist. <laughs> The barman. His wife. His children. <laughs> Drinks for everybody. Except him. He you said you'd wipe these. She's so beautiful, isn't she? You promised. Why should I? Because it's the past. And Stephen's paranoid about his patients finding out. To say nothing of the medical tribunal. Leave it. Well, then destroy it, as you promised. I never did understand your obsession with recording everything. Where is she, Viv? You're wearing us all out, Morris. Again. When? Tonight. Morris, Claudine is dead. Yes, I know. You've told me. Take your hands away. No. Please. <laughs> I think you've been keeping something from me. You were so smart and smug and sophisticated. We exploited her. You're not supposed to do it that hard. You taught me. I thought you liked it.
look lovely. I can only stay a little while. Coming in? No, I've got to get home. Don't fuck around, Derek. I'm offering you a drink. Look, I'm pushed for time. Maybe tomorrow. You know, you don't have to work with me. Come off it, Ray. I really have to get home. Yeah. see her, you know, Viv. Tonight. She got away, but she left her handbag. She's Jennifer Reynolds now. Did you know that? Morris? Any books like that around Morris? Yes, I'm sure. Names, addresses. Men, mostly. Problem? No, no, no problem. Just dropped in for a friendly chat. On your own. And what do you want to chat about? Thought you might need some advice from someone who knows the traps. That'd be you, Ray. <clears throat> Kill for a drink. <laughs> I believe you would. 
You know, you're pretty smart for a young fella. I'm glad you think so. But you lack one thing. Oh, yeah, what's that? Edge. Edge. Yeah. Take that book of yours. How did you feel when me old mate Hodges told you that he really had murdered his sister-in-law? Wasn't hard to persuade him to tell you, you know. That was a pretty good setup, Ray. I never did thank you for it. Well, it's not too late. Oh, you'll like the story tomorrow. I wouldn't worry, Ray. I'm not stupid. No. I know you're not stupid. But you are a mug. Tell me why. Could have made a fortune with your book. Not here. It's too late, granted. But overseas, they lap that shit up. Sells the conscience. And that's where you lack edge. You don't follow through. You see, Ray, money's not that important to me. Don't kid yourself. Look, Tom, you still got a bright future. If you remember who your mates are. How could I forget? Got any good tapes? Where is she? Good morning. Long time no see. Was Vivian here last night? No, oh, I don't know. Was she here or wasn't she? I told you, I haven't got a clue. I was pissed as a fart. Did you phone her last night? I was just reminiscing, actually. You said you destroyed all those. Hmm. I lied. I went any with Vivian or myself in them destroyed. No, I'm not surprised. Hardly the sort of thing for a leading surgeon to be doing, is it? Dear Christ, how did Claudine ever put up with you? Amazing how one's friends change over the years, isn't it? Rather tragic, actually, and quite repellent. You're a failure in every respect, aren't you, Morris? We're all fed up to the eye teeth with you and your absurd fantasies. Even in myself, especially. Oh, please, do try and forgive me. Right. What do you got? Well, it seems that Eddie and Phillips got away with quite a bit the other night. Well, how much? The trouble is nobody appears to be keeping the records, so they can't tell us just yet. Bloody nuts. Not even a rough idea. If only that it's a lot. What the fuck's a lot, dearie? 20,000, 100,000? A million? A lot. Just a lot. Stuart here, I believe there's a call for me. See you, Tom. Yes, Neil? I'll be right there. Body of a naked woman in the boot of a submerged car over at Cornell. Come on. Let me get you to New York. Well, if I can prove she did it herself. She? Black over there's wife Enderby. Well, you got what you want? No, nah, not quite yet. All right, well, I'm going to get this stuff developed back at the lab. The hill guys can be there. Right on, Nick. See you there. Right, man.
on Ray. Don't give me that classified information, brother. Give me a lead. In the BC, this guy Morris Martin could have been the last one to see her alive. That's it. That's enough. I'll find it. Hello there. Did you want something? Yeah, I wanted to see Mr. Martin. He's not there. He left after the policeman came. Did Mr. Martin say when he'd be back? He came over this morning and talked to Mummy. He'll be coming back tomorrow morning, he said. What I'm saying, Ray, is things don't work the way they used to anymore. And in what way was that, sir? The story we have got, Birch, is that the guy went down after the first shot, not the second. You must know what it's like out there, sir. Maybe you don't. But there were a lot of things happening that day. It wouldn't be difficult for things to get distorted in people's minds. Tell me exactly who was it, Mr... Um... Stansfield. Mr. Stansfield, that saw it this way. That'll be all for now, Birch. Very good, sir. Hello. My name's Morris Martin. I'm looking for Mr. Seeker. I'm afraid Mr. Seeker is not available, Mr. Martin. May I help you? I was hoping to locate my wife. I have reason to believe she's been living in the area. I'm sorry, I haven't seen her. It's a small community. I would have known. I see. Thank you. Mr. Seeker. What do you want? You can help me. I think not, Mr. Martin. And you're looking for your wife. I've seen the pictures. Trespassing. Tell me about them. About how you came to know her. I advise you to get out. better in my life. The timing was bad. So, how have you been? Fine. Are you at the hospital in 20 minutes? 
Anthony, can I ask you a really big favor? Oh, this will be good. Would it be all right if I stayed here for tonight? I won't be here till five. That's all right, I won't wait up. Oh, you won't have to, because you'll be in the spare room. Great, I'll just put this in there. Can't thank you enough. Strangely quiet about Eddie Weeks, little horn. Thought you might be able to help. I'd like to size, but nobody's heard a thing. Strike you as odd? Very. Meaning? Meaning it must have been outsiders involved. Or they dumped it before the crash. Very good, Jimmy. They rob a bank, know they're going to have a smash, so they bury the money. You're going to have to do better than that, old son. What are you doing in here? Reading a book. Tom, we're divorced. Ah, that was ages ago. Was it? So how's work? Shit house. You know, at the risk of repeating myself, this really is the arsehole of the world. Yeah, I think I've heard that somewhere before. So it's still New York, then? What do you want? No. Huh? No. No. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Don't. Come on. Don't, don't come here, please. Listen to me. Listen. We should have had kids. And have them end up like you. You got a point. God, I liked you once. He even liked me too once. Stewart. <laughs> Detective Ray Birch, who in turn was promoted through these investigations, was able to establish... You made the whole thing yourself? Yes. Yeah. It's a sort of hobby of mine. I really admired your book very much. That's why I used it with the kids. I don't suppose you'd mind, uh, I don't know, maybe writing something on it for me? By all means, sir. Uh, Thanks. What can I say? <clears throat> I take it all that stuff about fabricated evidence was just a smear tactic. Uh, not entirely, Morris. Um, the truth of the matter is that he actually did do it. He told me so after the second trial. You had no idea? There was a sneaking suspicion, but it um, didn't stop me writing it. Thanks. Another drink? Never say no. You see, I'm uh, working on the end of the murder, and uh, if you could help me with a couple of questions, it, um, it might give me a clearer line on the story. Sure. Well, first off, um, I understand that Dr. Enderby said you rang his wife the night she was killed. Yes, I know the police told me. In fact, I haven't seen or spoken to Viv for, I don't know, about a month. It's odd, isn't it, that he'd say uh, you were the last person she spoke to? Well, we've been friends for a long time, and, uh... Well, the truth is, Vivian's rather fond of, uh, other men, if you know what I mean. Although well, I doubt if Stephen would put quite such a fine point on it. So she, uh, used a mutual friend as an alibi? That sort of thing, yeah. I see. Well, 
Do you mind if I ask a personal question, Morris? No. I understand your own wife died six months ago. Yes. She died in Paris. Car accident. That's her then. Very beautiful lady. There was never anyone more beautiful. I'm sorry. ...to a well-known artist, Laszlo Seeker, and his housekeeper, Madeline Kovic. Juice. Scotch. Of course. I'll join you. Good to see you. You like? Different. To the bin. It was bound to heaven. Do you want to talk about it? Uh, did Claude go back to what she used to do? What? Look, I've tried all the travel agencies, every single one of them. Nobody's ever heard of her. It just doesn't make sense. Could she still be alive? Do you think that's possible? No, darling. I don't see how she could be. But you tell me, wouldn't you? I mean, if you even suspected anything. All I know is that a year before she died, she was working for some woman called Spicer. So she only pretended to go overseas? Morris, it's past. She loved you and only you. Leave it at that. I need to talk to the Spicer woman. Why? Barbara, please. It won't do you any good. Spicer, Eve. What if I told you I'd seen her? Seen Claudine? What would you say? I only wish I could believe you had. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Turning to crime, as we all should have done ages ago. Ken, I want you to work up something on the Seeker murders. Misshrouded house in the mountains, that kind of crap. Uh, Neil, um, could I grab that one? Uh, Ken won't mind, will you, Ken? All right, Tom. As long as you don't turn it into a book again. <laughs> now, Carol, I've got something here for you as well. to me, will you?
the shop. You wouldn't believe it if I told you. Back to the paper, then? Yeah, I'll go on from there. No, I'm sure it's the same girl. How old? No, I can't tell ages. Late 20s, I guess. She pretty? Yeah, she is. Very. I thought she said she was dead. Keep spice at me. Delightful person, warm, intelligent, and beautiful. A rare creature. What sort of a job did she have, Doctor? She was an overseas tour guide. Oh, yeah? Who with? I have no idea. She wasn't ever a model, was she? An artist model? Not to my knowledge. Look, I'm sorry, Stuart, but I promised I'd look in on a patient. Sure. Thanks for the drink.
Satisfying your insatiable curiosity, Stuart? In a way. Actually, I was looking for the tapes you took from Morris Martin's house. I suppose it's a bit embarrassing to leave that sort of stuff lying around. Well, thank you not to pry into my personal affairs. Well, given the circumstances, there might be a bit of public interest here. By dragging my name and that of my late wife through the mud, is that what you're implying? No, I'm not implying that. I just want to find out what's going on. You have no private life, then, I take it. No personal secrets. No habits you prefer not disclosed in jury detail on the front page of your newspaper. Well, weren't we discussing your situation? No, no. We're discussing yours. If you don't leave me alone, you'll find yourself in prison. Is that a threat, Doc? Yes. Thought so. Hey, Mick. Can you make out the postmark on that? Dark glasses help? 28th of December? Not October, is it? I don't think so, why? Mm. Doesn't matter. Drink? Can't, gotta go. Ooh. Well, where are you gonna be? Out. Then either back here or around at Annie's. Ah. You two friends again? Never enemies, mate. Just incompatible. Thirsty? Marvelous times, Mr. Stewart. Unconventional times. We were all very close. Was Morris ever in love with Vivian Enderby? In love? Hmm. If you mean by that, did Morris ever sleep with Vivian, the answer is yes. But then so did we all at various times. You mean Stephen and Morris and... and Vivian and myself, yes. Didn't Stephen explain? No, he didn't. Well, he must be a little shy these days. Oh, wasn't Morris married to a Claudine... Vargas? Yeah. No, he was married to me. I don't quite understand. Claudine was an English girl we met in Spain. San Sebastian, actually. You see, we even used to take our holidays together. She and Morris fell in love. You realize what she was? No. She was a whore, Mr. Stewart. A very beautiful and highly paid whore. She was utterly charming and captivating. And in a very real sense, we were all in love with her. Yes? Mrs. Spicer, my name's Martin. You were recommended to me. It's the top floor, Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin. Tell me, do you think it's possible that Claudine Vargas is still alive? Well, what an extraordinary question. Is it? I understood it was Vivian you wanted to discuss. I think it's all connected. Do you really? Is that Claudine? Yes. Awfully commercial, don't you think? The sculptor at Morris Martin's house, I suppose. I did several of her, if that's the question. Is she alive or not? You've been listening to Morris. You're looking for a mystery, Mr. Stewart, and there isn't one. Claudine is dead. It's as simple and as sad as that. photograph what about you me unless there's really a mr. Spicer of course there is but you're at liberty to choose whomever you like then I choose you I'm very flattered when are you free tonight could be reorganized for dinner lovely I really wanted to ask you something rather private a specialty. Well, not exactly. 
I want to know if my wife worked for you. Her name's Claudine, but uh, I think you might have known her as Jennifer Reynolds. I don't know anyone by that name. I'm sorry. I think you do. If you'll excuse me just for a minute. She did work for you, I've been told. I don't know her. Where? I don't know who you're talking about. I want to know where. Let me go. Where is she? Let me go. Where? Let me go. Where is she? I don't know where she is. Tell me. Where? See, even poor Barbara still thinks she's dead. But she's not. She's alive. Could you at least clear something up for me? There's a postcard, right? It's dated two months after Claudine Martin's supposed to have died. I gave you some advice when you broke into my home, Stuart. Yes, sure. You seem to have forgotten it or ignored it. No, no, look. If she's alive, she could be in serious danger. Do you understand? Look, is she alive or not? Rick. Mrs. This, I gotta do the carpet. Nick, my boy. Ah. Bradshaw's looking for you. You said you'd be at Annie's. Yeah, I know. Listen, do me a favor, will you? I tell X London. Ask him to check on the death of a Claudine Martin. She was a British citizen, supposed to have died in Paris about six months ago. Had a maiden name of Vargas. Come on, mate, it's not my job. Ask another girl. Oh, come on, don't be a turd. Do me a big favor. I haven't got time. Well, what do I say to Bradshaw? I don't know. Tell Bradshaw what you like. Hello, boss. Where the hell have you been? I've been working my ass off. Well, there's been another murder. Tap this address, and they've jammed the lid down tight. Find out what it's all about. On my way. Hi, Tom. No press. Ray. Media's not invited. <coughs> not your territory, is it, Ray? Everything's my territory, son. A bit late to stop trusting me now, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, let's go. Let's take a look. Sure. Okay, we just need a couple more details. Any theories? Rival operation? Maybe. Or just some nutter who hates women. Clients, you mean? Speaking of which, take a gander at that. Special clientele. But keep it to yourself. Don't suppose you'd recognize any of these? On my wages? Don't put your daughter on the stage, huh? There's some more, right? Thousand dollar bracket, this lot. A lot of bucks to get your end in, isn't it? You know it? No. Nah. Classy. Well, be sure to let me know if that fertile mine of yours comes up with something, won't you? By the way, remember the night Eddie Weeks and his mate got killed? Word is that they didn't get a chance to drop the money. What about the paramedics? Uh, Rare breed, then. Honest as the day is long. Like me. You get much? Some. Beats me. Yeah, real mystery. Yeah, I know how much it costs, Phil. Just make the arrangements, OK? Yeah. And remember, use the name Neil Bradshaw. You got that? Neil Bradshaw, yeah. Right. What the hell is this? Well, what is it? Well, it's stolen. I'm using it. For what? I don't know. Balance the books, maybe. What do you mean, with Ray Birch? Well, I wasn't going to keep it, was I? Why not? Might be for me. Hello? Hello? Nick? London says there's no clothing, Mark. Got no record of a death? No. Yeah, right. Thanks, Mick. Hello? Yep. Annie, I've got to split for a couple of days. You're leaving your things? Oh, come on. Don't be like that. Look, can I leave the money here? There's a lot happening. I just need a couple of days to put things into place. Of course you do.
Yes? Mrs. Klein, Neil Bradshaw here. Of course, Mr. Bradshaw. Thank you. Pleasure. I'm Major Klein. How do you do? Do come in. Inga, a marvelous joy. This is your first visit here, Neil. He knows you're alive, and he's killed people to find out. You're Claudine Martin, aren't you? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm Tom Stewart, and I'm a reporter. Morris must have found out about this place by now, too. Listen, you've got to let me get you out of here, and quick. Believe me, please. Come on. I saw a painting of you at Seeker's place, so I put two and two together. What about the police? I don't think they've even got the first base yet. I hear internal are really up for your blood this time. So what's new? Tell me, do you know if the paramedics saw anyone close to Eddie Weeks before he died? Only Stuart and his photographer, mate. Stuart was jollying him along, trying to keep him away. That's probably what killed him. Thought you knew. No. No, I didn't. I want you to find Eddie's girl for me. Susie, what's her name? Quick. I'll go find somewhere, get some help. I'll call the police. Look, he was trying to kill us. Please, let's go.
Ray Birch. Jimmy here. Yes, Jimmy. Eddie's Hall is over 270,000. Say that again. Third charge. 270,000. Okay, thanks, Jimmy. Keep it under your hat, will you? Eddie's girlfriend, Susie, just came back from a holiday in Bali with some young stud. Seems she came into some money. Question is, Derek, old son, just how much? Tom Stewart, please. Not here at the moment. Ray Birch here. Where is it? Oh, no idea, Sergeant. Some <coughs> private project. Well, just tell him I want to chat. Get it real, eh? Yeah, big one. Christ, it didn't give in easy. Ran me into the bank. Front end's the problem. No worries. You and the missus need a bed for the night? I think we might. Fix that too. a stupid question. That's your job, isn't it? No, I'm just curious, really. The sort of work you do, uh... Why do you do it? Why do you do it? Delusions of grandeur, I think. Well, I'm not like you. I like what I do. <laughs> Come on, the money's great. Buy you a lot of freedom? Not always. So you want to tell me what this is all about? Just interested in Susie's welfare. And? And how honest our reporter friend is. You be all right in there? I'm used to taking care of myself. How's he get involved with a bloke like Morris, then? At the time, I really needed someone to look after me, and he was it. Then he got so jealous and possessive. Are you doing this just for the story? Yeah, I suppose I am. Bad habit, that. So that's the stuff. Didn't take long to forget about Eddie. Amazing what a little money can buy, isn't it? We off then? No, no. I'll handle this one on my own. Just let him settle in about, I think. Stuart, give you. I don't know what you're talking about. Susie, trust me. A few grand. How many grand? Exactly.
Are you tired? I should be, but I'm not. Thinking up some more questions. You know, all I ever do is think up questions. Are you married, Tom? Hmm? You married? Yes. I was. Divorced. What happened? I was a prick. And I didn't respect what I had. Most people don't. Well, they should. You know something? It might not be too late. Stuart. Want his ass wherever it is. Want to tell me why? Nope. Well, that's clear enough. So you never were a tour guide? No. That was just a story I used to get away for a while. So I could breathe. And Enderby, he just happened to be a partner at the Raven's Head place. Great mix of careers. Prominent surgeon, brothel owner. And what did you do when that idea didn't work? Well, Vivian came up with a plan that I should die. Ironic, isn't it? She said if I just disappeared, that Morris wouldn't stop until he found me. Look, Bert said there's a bike in that old shed. I'll ride over and see how the car's going. Maybe we can get out of here. I won't be long. How's the car going? Something rude, you hit? Sure was. Tell me, does that phone work? Did yesterday. Good one. Neil Bradshaw, please. Hello. Talking to Bradshaw. Mr. Bradshaw. Yes. Hello. Hello. So how much longer with the car? Another few hours. Great, I'll be back then. Okay. Morris? No, Bert would have said if they had. Did you phone the story in? 
No, I didn't. For my mind, you also. Nice old mess we got into, didn't we? Look, the girl exists and she must have killed Martin because I bloody well didn't. And why the fuck can't I see my lawyer? Take it easy. All in good time. Ray, we both know I didn't kill anybody. Do we? No sign of your mystery, woman. What fucking mystery? Oh, come on, cut the bullshit. There's only a few places she could be. Look, if you pull your finger out, it's not hard to find her. You owe me that much. I owe you nothing. Helmsley's plants. Helmsley's? Mm-hmm. Good. Charge her and let me go. Pardon? Charge her and let me go, Ray. What with, Tom? Oh, come on, Ray. Morris wasn't even gonna hurt her, let alone kill her. Morris was the lunatic. So? He's supposed to have murdered four people. It's perfectly simple, old son. Self-defense. Your story, however, still doesn't add up. My story. How does it go again? She pushes you out of the way, grabs the wheel, drives Morris off the road. Yeah. Pretty thin, mate. Ray, what are you saying exactly? I'm saying, shut up, and you can walk away from here. Start playing reporter again, and you'll end up in the shit. There are still unsolved murders out there, and you've been a regular observer. 
be made to look pretty bad. You serious? You think anyone's gonna believe that? Tom, go home. I've run out of favors. Annie, you home? What? Ray Birch was in my home. He oh, treated no. me like a piece of shit and took all your precious money. Annie, when was he here? Look, I don't need to be a When was he here, Annie? When was he here? Yesterday. Oh, shit, Annie, I'm sorry. I really am, but I've got to go. Tom. I'll be back, Annie. You are so I'm fucking sorry. irresponsible. Where's Birch? He's not around. You know where he is? No idea. Stuart! I'll let you in on a little secret. And what's that? It's over for him. Internal one for a scapegoat. You serious? Ray's had it and he knows it. Thanks. Where is she? Mr. Stewart. You're too late. She's on a flight to New York today. She wouldn't be on her own, would she? Hello? Mick, you've got to meet me at Circular Key in about 20 minutes. Okay. Now, don't fuck around. You'll be there, all right? Oh, I'll not be there. Don't bother, Mr. Stewart. You know what's happening here. I think I finally tumbled to it. So where do we go from here? Do me one favor, Ray. Don't come back. What should I do? Chase my ass around in circles for the rest of my life? It's not worth it, Mick. It's all bullshit. So, you let him in get away with it, eh? Mate, they deserve each other. And that's it, is it? Maybe. I told you I'd be back. I know you've heard all this before, but I am sorry. What happened with Birch? He just made a very serious mistake. The one that was meant for me. Are you serious about us? You bet I am.
there's a passbook here. And it's got $150,000 in it. For us. I knew there was a reason I liked you.